you just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. Tonight, Fijian women's groups share their experiences with ACP member countries. FNPF releases new fee structure for housing assistance benefits. And joint US, Fiji and Japan teams build new classrooms in Wailevu. Delegates at the African, Caribbean and Pacific Group meeting in Suva discussed various issues facing women in Fiji and member states during the Women's Forum today. The meeting is being held in Suva as part of the 29th session of the ACP-EU Joint Parliamentary Assembly. Alan Stoltz reports. The forum attracted representatives from women's groups in Fiji. Executive Director of Femlink Pacific Sharon Bagwan Rawl says the forum provides a platform for women in Fiji to share how they are working through coalition, diversities and at an intergenerational level. Sustainable development goals which are being developed this year is another important issue on the agenda. The sustainable development goals that parliamentarians have a critical role in ensuring this year in particular um, that gender equality and women's rights are central not just to the sustainable development goals but the connections and the importance that they have right now with the peace and stability goal of the new SDG. Bhagwan Rawls added it is crucial that gender equality is right up there with more serious issues such as climate change. A noticeable absence at the forum was the permanent secretary for women, Dr. Josefa Corrivueta, leading one of the women's groups, feeling like the meeting focused more on the negatives than positives. It's a pity that the permanent secretary for women wasn't present because um, the, he might have been able to provide a more balanced uh, picture of the country in terms of gender because uh, in my view there's been some progress in terms of providing for gender and the inclusion of gender in the constitution. Dr. Korevuate could not be reached for a comment. The meeting aims to promote and defend democratic processes in ACP-EU partnership framework through dialogue and consultation and facilitate greater understanding between the people of the European Union and those of the ACP states. The hope of this meeting is to ensure that messages are articulated beyond forums and panels. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. The Small Island Developing States, or SIDS, will hold a special forum later this year to address issues relating to its member countries, including Fiji. ACP Council of Ministers met a week ago in Brussels and approved the creation of a SIDS forum. Ritika Pratap reports. Fiji's consular based at the mission to the European Union in Brussels. Nidendra Singh says being part of the ACP grouping is important for developing countries like Fiji. Singh says the SIDS forum will be a good platform to discuss issues faced by its members. With the creation of this SIDS forum, which will be quite focused on addressing SIDS concerns, as well as implementing the outcome of the recent uh, SIDS conference that was held in Samoa and uh, they had adopted the Samoa pathway. So the forum would be very much uh, involved with that process. ACP JPA Secretary General Dr. Patrick Gomez says the forum is going to be a major vehicle to implement the Samoa pathway. He says there should be provisions made for SIDS so that the way in which development is approached in states that are vulnerable are given more concession. Among our small island states, some are relatively heavily indebted. Therefore, what arrangements for debt rescheduling are in fact the wiping out of debts? If not, we are in a continual cycle 
of attempting to develop uh, climatic uh, conditions arise over which we have no control as you faced uh, here with a cyclone of palm destroying and you have to rebuild. There are 79 countries within the ACP group out of which more than 30 countries including Fiji are small island developing states. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The Fiji National Provident Board has announced a new fee structure for housing assistance benefits which eliminates and reduces some of the current charges. The FNPF has stopped placing securities on members' properties to protect their funds since the decision to reserve 70% of members' balance for retirement. Julie Vatuwaliwali reports. Effective next month, the $200 legal fee will no longer be levied on members. In addition, members will save one consent application fees of up to $70 as approved lenders do not need FNPF consent for members to increase their mortgages for any additional lending or for refinancing of loans. The discharge fees for titles of properties held by the fund has been reduced from $60 to $50 per application. A new processing fee of $100 will be levied for all housing applications related to purchase of property service fee and to pay off or reduce home loan. The new fee also applies for building, renovating or extending, acquiring a property under estate, electrification or installation of water tanks and solar systems. There are a range of other facilities that have been introduced with minimal fees. Julie Watuwaliwali, FBC News. Students at Wailevu District School in Savu Savu will soon be able to study in new classrooms. An engineering team from the U.S. naval ship Mercy is currently constructing the classrooms for the school. Ali Kimbia travelled to Wailevu to find out more. About an hour after departing Nausuri Airport in the morning, our team arrived at Wailevu Village, much to the delight of villagers and children. An engineering team from the U.S., Fijian and Japanese soldiers have been at the village for the past four weeks constructing two new classrooms for the Wailevu East District School. It will really help our village and the school and this even motivate us parents to keep on encouraging our children to study hard and become successful in life. The total cost of the project is $226,000 and project crew leader Kayla Holland says their time in the village working and experiencing the local lifestyle is something they will cherish for a long time. Uh, it's been a great uh, privilege for us as CBs and the Navy to come out and uh, provide uh, our expertise and uh, improve the things for the villages. And another good thing for it is that uh, we have the chance to work with the Fijians, the Japanese, and the Marines as well. So they're teaching us things that we don't know and we're, we're showing them a little bit of our construction quality as well. For the six Japanese soldiers involved in the project, safety of the students is their priority. First we need to think about the security of the, the construction and then, and then they, they use the people, uh, the kids use the, this uh, building. The construction of the school has brought smiles to the villages of Oilebu as this will be one of the moments that they will cherish for the rest of their lives. Ali Kimbia. FBC News. The week-long French music festival organized by the French Embassy has been launched in Suva today. The event kicked off with a march from the flea market to Sukuna Park. Amongst those who participated were embassy staff and supporters of the music festival. Chief guest, the Minister for Youth and Sports, Colonel Lesenia Tuitumbo, says the event will bring out the talents of Fijian musicians. We are not professional musicians, but we are born musicians. Uh, some of us uh, use that uh, talent uh, and uh, uh, mix it with the westernized uh, uh, way of uh, doing music and study music, that they become successful. The festivities will include French wine and cheese tasting and performance from the Gypsy Jazz Band of New Caledonia. Coming up, Musket Cove Resort's trader reopens for business. Sabutumai, and a 
Nimbolo Banaka, or you will be can I sorrow, run your Natomania, or my, my Navito Neca, begin a tinny corona and bony level, and a Nono Morotaki, Sequoia, my younger bony, and a Bola FM, and Nambandua, and a Serra. Welcome back to FBC News. Now, the Constitutional Officers Commission has advertised for the position of the Commissioner of the Correction Service. Some of the attributes which the candidate must possess include good public relations skills and demonstrate prof proficiency in information technology applications. Interested parties must have extensive and relevant work experience in the correction service as well. Commissioner Colonel Eferemi Vasu says he will reapply for the position. I'm really enjoying the, uh, the job that I'm doing now. Uh, so I will apply for the position. Actually, my contract already expired. That's why they advertised the post. It's just gone through the system. Uh, as uh, the Constitution uh, Commission is there in place, I think it's fair. The Commission has also advertised for the position of Auditor General. The general store at the Musket Cove Island Resort on Malolalai Lai Island has reopened two years after it was burned to the ground. The new two-story building replaces the former one, which was destroyed in a fire started by a lightning strike. Christopher Chan reports. This is the brand new trader, which now includes a supermarket, cafe, boutique shop and the resort's new reception area. The Musket Cove Resort was built by Richard, also known as Dick Smith in 1976 and 10 years after he built and operated Fiji's first island resort Castaway for those of you that are not familiar with it. It's also a bittersweet day because it would have been lovely to have dad here. Um, I think he would have liked to have seen it. He would have been impossible to live with during the bill period though so there's that. The hotel's father figure Dick Smith passed away in 2012 but continuing on his legacy are his daughter and son-in-law. We spent um, about five and a quarter million dollars, and um, uh, which was uh, significantly more than the old one. And um, but I think we we felt confident in uh, in where Fiji's going and where tourism's going to spend that money. The opening of Musket Cove's uh, newest addition, the Trader General Store Boutique Cafe, is uh, approximately five million dollar Fijian investment into the Fijian economy by a domestic investor. The new facility will cater for hotel guests, staff, neighbouring islands and yachties who frequent Musket Cove for supplies. Well, it's been, yeah, so from April 2013 when it first burnt down till, uh, to now, it's been, it's been a long journey for us. It's, um, it's obviously been a stressful journey and things because it was the, the shop and store and things was you know, an integral part of the resort. With the new trader open for business, Musket Cove has got a whole new look one that is going to give it an enhanced guest experience. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Everyone ages differently, so some people are perfectly capable of continuing to drive in their 70s, 80s and even beyond. FBC News spoke to LTA CEO Naisa Tuinadeva to find out how old is too old to drive. Investigations into an accident in which an 85-year-old driver ran over a 4-year-old child came to a close on Monday with the driver being fined, ordered to surrender his driver's license and get medical clearance before renewing it again. Apart from upsetting a number of people and causing public debate on social media, it brought up the question, how old is too old to drive? We don't have any age limit at the moment. Uh, it uh, is uh, the advice uh, from uh, any uh, you know, uh, uh, medical personnel, a doctor, uh, you know, somebody is qualified to do that. Driving represents so many things, including independence, freedom and control. It may be difficult for many to just put away their keys. However, once a driver is a certain age, they will be required to produce more than just a renewal driver's license form. Uh, all they need to do at uh, the age of uh, 70, uh, they will need to, um, if they want to come for their renewal, all they uh, need to do is to um, bring a, a medical certificate with them. You know. Um, you know, certifying that uh, they, are, they are fit uh, to drive. And uh, we use um, uh, that uh, certification uh, to uh, renew license or even to give new license uh, to the elderly. 
While many may argue that more needs to be done, Uinadeva confirms the authority is simply abiding by the Land Transport Act of 1998. The authority is not too concerned with elderly drivers at this point in time. You know, elderly and mature drivers are more safe the way I look at it. When you base it from uh, the accidents, um, figures and fatalities, uh, they are safe. Uh, but the point is uh, uh, we need to have uh, medical clearance. Whether an elderly driver comes to the conclusion on their own that it's time to surrender their license or they're forced to do so, it's a big moment and it can be devastating. But the consequences of not doing so may be even more devastating. Jackie Spade, FBC News. About 4,000 mangrove seedlings have been planted at the foreshore along Queen Elizabeth Drive in Suva today. The mangrove planting project was carried out by staff of DHL in support of World Environment Day, which is commemorated on June 5th. The company's country manager, Fiji and Pacific Islands, Mark Comini, says the mangrove will benefit the environment. It protects the... Uh the coastline, make sure there's non it's beach erosion to try and stop the uh, the beach, the sea from encroaching on the beach. So it's all part of um, our DHL's global environment and, and also our corporate uh, social responsibility to Fiji. We, we always try, every year we try and do something different to, um, to help out the environment. Kamini says this is a small contribution which their team can make to the country. Well, in sports news, Suva rugby side remains unbeaten in the Skipper Cup competition. And Jack's Nandi football side scoops Rewa Galaxy Premier League title. موسیقی महिती राते हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक रात सात से लेकर बारह के बीच रेडियो फी टू देश की धड़कन पर रविंद्र सिंह के साथ Welcome to FPC Sports and the Suva Rugby side has maintained its unbeaten run in the Skipper Cup competition after thrashing over Lao 45-0 at the ANZ Stadium this afternoon. The capital city side dominated territory and possession throughout the encounter, marshalled well by Vodafone Fiji 7's rep Emosi Mulevoro, who also managed to score a try. In other matches today, Neta Seri handed Namosi their first loss this season, while Nandrunga proved too strong for Tabua. Jack's Nandi captain Samuel Andrunru scored a goal to help the Jet Setters defeat Lotoka 1-0 at Govind Park and win the Rewa Galaxy Premier League title for the first time since 2002. Nandi has now qualified as the top local team for the OFC Champions League next season. Chalindo Dhaka Dhaka has more. Back to Antonio Tuibuna, Tuibuna. Samuel Andrunru was the toast of the Nandi side as he scored this lone goal in the 29th minute against Lotoka, handing his side the Rewa Galaxy Premier League title. During this training time, all the officials were there, which gave the players a lot of encouragement. And then we planned out uh, very well for this game because we knew what Lotoka was playing, and we we shut them up in the midfield and uh, the flank players so that they could not cross the balls. And I think that it worked. The Nandi players will receive $100 each for the win, as well as a share of an $18,000 prize purse to reward their efforts. Although the side has booked a spot in the OFC Champions League next season, Nandi don't want to get ahead of themselves. Uh, we are are not uh, thinking of the old league at the moment. We have got another two, le uh, two league games to be played. I think so we'll play the two le league games and then after that, uh, that's BOG, then the IDC, then we'll come to where the whole league is there. Now that Nandi has secured the GPL title, the battle is on for second spot, which will be a tight contest between Lotoka, Lambasa, Rewa and Suva. Thailand, Dodakavak, FBC Sports. In the other match played last night, Malakai Tiwa scored two goals while Avinash Warren added another goal to help Ba defeat Nandrunga 3 0. 
Today at Subral Park, Rewa scored a 2-1 win over Lombasa, improving their chances of finishing in second spot on the points table. The Vodafone Fiji football side drew one all with Solomon Islands in their opening match in the Four Nations Friendship Cup in Vanuatu. Solomon Island raced to an early lead in the 25th minute, but Fiji drew level with a goal to Christopher Wasasala with 15 minutes remaining in the match. Prior to this match at Port Villa Stadium, host Vanuatu defeated New Caledonia 1-0. The Fiji Volleyball Federation will recruit new members to ensure the Levy saga, which almost stopped Fiji's participation in the Pacific Games, is not repeated. After initially failing to raise the levy required to send a men's and women's indoor and beach volleyball teams, the Chinese embassy stepped in to pay the total amount. This is something to, to ponder on in terms of identification of people to come on board to do this. And uh, we've just, uh, uh, I think this is in place uh, where we have all our governance uh, documentations in place to see that we, the people are appointed to, um, to do this for us. The Pacific Games will be held in Papua New Guinea from July 4th to the 18th. Surfers Inia Nakalevu and other Ravulo could not progress to the third round of the Fiji Men's Pro at cloud break in Tavarua. Nakalevu lost to Brazil's Adriano de Souza in the second round this morning, notching 6.87 points to his opponent's 13.50 points. In Heat 2, Ravulo fared better than yesterday by recording 8.86 points, but was outscored by another Brazilian, Felipe Toledo, by 10.70 points. 11-time world champion Kelly Slater scored the highest points in round 2 today with 8.70. The Fiji Men's Pro continues tomorrow. Well, showers were experienced over Vanuelevu, Taviuni, the Lao Group and the interior and eastern parts of the other larger islands today. Mainly fine weather prevailed elsewhere. A trough of low pressure lies just to the north of Fiji. Associated cloud and showers affect the northern part of Fiji. Taking a look at temperatures, Lambasa hit a maximum temperature of 32 degrees today, while the other centres recorded below 30. Suva notched a maximum to of 26. Expect temperatures to drop to 21 around 1am tomorrow in the capital. Nandarivatu can also expect a low of 19 degrees tonight. Tomorrow you can expect occasional showers with isolated heavy falls over Vanuelevu, Taviuni, Lao Group, the eastern parts and interior of the other larger islands. Possible afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. And heading into Monday, fine weather apart from brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the, uh, the larger islands. On to the main points again, an international meeting in Suva today has provided Fijian women a platform to share how they are working through coalition, diversities and an intergenerational level. The Fiji National Provident Fund Board has announced a new fee structure for housing assistance benefits which eliminates and reduces some of the current charges. And the Small Island Developing States or SIDS will hold a special forum later this year to address issues relating to its member countries including Fiji. On to our poll question this week. Should primary school students be allowed to use the internet outside of school? Visit our FPC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensisatfpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or hashtag FPC News. You've been watching FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night. Great words there from Lucky Dube and Babana. Hope you enjoyed that number. Different colors just for you on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Louise with you on the center show. Well, thank you so much for the sweet company. This is Alana Miles, one of my favorites, and Black Velvet for you. Hi there. Join me on the center show every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the best sounds on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. <laughs>